Hmm. It's not even visible. You can see my painting. I just started painting it. This is paint by numbers and I just started it. It's my second one. So if you guys are like me and think that you are not the greatest, uh, most talented at painting or drawing on your own, you can get paint by numbers and just now paint the dots, paint the numbers, and create something beautiful. P.S. This is not for everyone. This is only for those of you that think that it would relax you, that it would be something joyful. Something that you know that you would enjoy because a lot of people find this quite irritating and they don't have patience for it. I guess I wanted to boast about being an artist. Okay, enough. So today's video is going to be on one of your favorite topics, your future spouse. Who will you marry? We will find out who this person is, their zodiac sign, their rising sign, their appearance as well at the very end of the reading, their personality and any kind of details that we can get from the spirit about the one that you will marry. If you are new to my channel or you haven't seen my previous readings, I have a bunch of readings on the topic of your future spouse. So if you guys want to watch it, I will link the playlist up here and also in the description box. So thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. Reminder that I offer personal readings. So if you would like to book a personal reading with me, the link is in the description box. Let's go to the card selection and then I'll see you in your reading. All right, guys. So please choose one group that you feel the most drawn to. This is group number one. Group number two. Group number three. And group number four. So whichever card or group you guys feel the most drawn to, that is going to be your reading. All the timestamps are in the description box. So please look for your timestamp, click on it, and then I'll see you in your reading. And I'm going to start with the group number one. Hi, group one, you guys chose the Hermit. Let's see what other cards we have for you. As you guys can see, we're starting with the tarot cards and later on I'm going to check these cards that we have here, the oracle cards for the zodiac rising moon sign of your person. Maybe some physical appearance from that rising sign that we could get uh, and other astrology cards. But let's get started with what we have. So you guys have seven of coins, nine of coins, four of swords, two of wands, three of wands. So there's quite some fire energy here and quite some earth energy, which makes me feel like this person might have a lot of earth or or and <laughs> fire in their zodiac chart. So uh, I'm seeing someone very independent. I'm seeing someone self-sufficient, someone that likes to work um, and someone that probably really enjoys their job or they're striving to... Um, making their hobby, their interest, their full-time job. That's what I'm seeing. I, I feel like there is a big focus on that. So I'm just looking through the cards for now, uh, but I'm getting a lot of uh, messages. So I'm looking at the seven of coins. I see someone with the seven of coins that reflects a lot on their journey, on life, on... Um, on everything. <laughs> I feel like this person is a kind of a person that really reflects on the experiences that they have. They learn the lessons, you know, they do the homework, basically. Um, I feel like they're very intentional with what's next in their life and how can they um, maybe improve their life by looking at... Uh, you know, mistakes that they've made in the past. They reflect on that and they try to make the best out of it. Someone really grounded, someone really thoughtful, someone smart, someone intelligent, um, someone chill. Maybe, you know, with a two of ones and three of ones, I don't think that this means that this person is not fun or this person uh, doesn't know how to enjoy life or this person is like, uh, quiet. I'm not getting the quiet energy, more of like relaxing energy. 
uh, grounded energy. Uh, someone kind of that goes with the flow. Like they have a, this person has a vision for themselves, definitely. This person has a lot of goals with a two of wands and a three of wands. And they are consecutively um, taking steps towards towards them, taking action. But I feel also a very like easygoing energy with this person i feel like this person is not desperate to get somewhere you know like they are very ambitious i'm seeing that with the two of ones three of ones and the nine of coins but it's this kind of energy this person knows that it's going to come to them you know that eventually it will happen it's not a desperate energy it's very chill energy so i feel like that's something that you guys also will feel at the beginning when you're going to meet this person when you guys are going to start hanging out going on dates you are not getting any kind of desperate energy from this person you you kind of i feel like it's going to be very attractive uh for you because i feel like we often are attracted to people that are just not not an open book you know um people that we need to kind of get to know better to really understand people that are mysterious and people that are that seem that they don't mind kind of that's the kind of vibe that i'm getting from this person so moving on we have the nine of coins this is a very wealthy very elegant energy and also very independent and self-sufficient so definitely seeing that this person really enjoys working on their own um this person might be like entrepreneur this person might Actually, I remember when I pulled these cards, this made me feel like this person might be an athlete due to the Four of, Four of Swords card. Um, because this card is about healing the wounds. So healing the physical but also the mental wounds by i was just getting a message from the spirit saying that this person might be working out a lot or they might be an athlete they might be like a personal trainer or just training a lot with the four of swords this person might be a lot into extreme sports but going back to the nine of coins I think this person comes from a wealthy background or they created this, created this um, wealthy background uh, environment on their own. But I feel like mostly it is a kind of success that they have created themselves because that's what it is with the nine of coins. But for some of you, this person uh, does come from quite a wealthy um, family. Or it could be even like quite influential background or influential family. That's how it feels. Other families around, you know, neighbors or families in the community, they really respect that family. It could be something that their mother or father does that brought that, brought that respect to that family. But once again, um, I feel like it's someone that really deserves the things that they have in their life. Um, I do think that they're quite successful at the time when you guys are going to meet this person. We also have the two of wands and three of wands, which makes me feel like this person travels a lot or this person has been traveling a lot throughout their life. So they might come from a different country. This person might be a foreigner to you or for you, or however you say that in English. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just feel like this per person comes from like a different culture or has a different cultural background. They come from a different environment. But the, the two of ones and three of ones tell me as well that this person loves to travel, loves to explore. Uh, this person doesn't stay in one place for a long time. Uh, literally, maybe when they settle down, you know, when they... Uh, are going to settle down with a family. Uh, they will be in one place, but still this, this feels like this person travels a lot. So for their job, for their career, or just because they really love to do that. Um, they like to explore. And with a two of ones, once again, it's this vibe of someone that has big dreams, big goals for themselves. Uh, this is achiever you know this person wants to keep on achieving more and more but also um they do slow down with the seven of coins they they realize that it's not only about achieving more and more uh that it's important also to learn um from the experience that we already have 
Three of Wands makes me feel like this person might be quite a lot on the internet. They might be maybe vlogging their journeys or their adventures or they might be posting a lot on internet or they might be doing something that requires them to share some part of their life on the internet. It makes me feel like they, they quite often post on the internet. I don't think they're addicted to it though. It's this kind of energy of I'm doing it because I have to, but it's not like it fully brings them joy. You know, it's not like it's their it's their soul's purpose to be sharing uh, their experience like, you know, with everyone on the internet to, to be putting themselves out there. I just, I don't feel like this person is there for it, um, for fame, you know, or for recognition. I feel like they don't care about it, but it. I still feel like th they are quite popular or seen really well in in the eyes of others, really respected for what they know, for who they are, um, from for also where they come from, but also, as I said, the success that they have achieved on their own. All right, so let's take a look at what else we have. So we have the sun. So the sun is talking about... Um, our soul's purpose, what we came here to do, our creative power as well, and our pride, our uh, self-confidence, self-development, this is ego as well, this is our willpower, uh, but also a relationship with our father. So I feel like, once again, father plays an important role here in this person's life. And with the son in general, that lets me know that this person um, follows this purpose that they have. And I feel like this purpose, this soul's desire, what soul came here, their soul, their soul came here to do, is somehow connected with some like physical activity, with playing some sports and or doing some um, athletic activity, I would say. This person is very optimistic um, and is, you know, shining bright like a sun. So I feel like wherever this person goes, the sun shines and it brings more optimism, more energy, more charisma, uh, more flavor into a situation. So I feel like this person is really going to make your life better and I think with the sun this person in general has a lot of energy and they have to uh, get that energy somehow out through that physical physical activity that they do all right so we also have the second house all right second house about resources about uh, the money that we make uh, also the things that we have so I feel like with the second house, there, this person might have a lot of planets in the second house in their birth chart. Um, so they might care a lot about uh, being able to provide for themselves. That makes sense with the nine of coins, like wanting to achieve that level of success, monetary success on their own. So they can later on like spoil other people with uh, some expensive gifts, with um, being generous generous through giving uh, to others, especially like sharing their resources. I feel like this person also likes to buy um, some maybe more luxurious or expensive things. And let's see their zodiac moon rising sign. So we have a Leo, which says shine, just like with the sun, with the sun, as I was saying, this person shines bright wherever they go. So Leo, that could be the rising sun or moon sign. The Leos are performers. They know how to behave on stage and how to give good speech and put on a show, basically. I gotta say that they like the attention and admiration that they get from others. But as I said, this person is not about like, oh, I want to get famous. I feel like this person is more um, focused on that second house, on bringing money, you know, on achieving that level of success because they want to be able to provide for themselves and for their family in the future and treat others and treat themselves like just to live a good life. Uh, through making, uh, through doing something that they love to do, through their hobby, through their sole purpose. 
So Aaliyahs are definitely very fun people, very playful, creative, uh, warm and generous and very bold. So we also have, okay, we have a Taurus as well, you know, which makes sense. It's uh, the second house, uh, the second zodiac sign, and also we have the second house here. Since this is an earth sign, earth signs are connected with the physical world, with, with what's physical, with what we can see. Taurus people, they also really like to spend money on good food. They are foodies. They don't regret spending uh, hard-earned money on something to treat themselves with. Makes sense as well with the seven of coins because Taurus is extremely patient. These people are super patient, very slow to anger. They really love security, which also makes sense with the line of coins and everything that I was saying before. Um, they just want to make sure that they have a stable ground to build upon. And I gotta say that Taurus people, they're extremely uh, enduring and persistent and committed to their partners and committed to the goals that they have. So we also, I'm just wondering if I could put this here and if you guys aren't going to see it if I put it here. Okay, let's just leave it here. So we also have a Gemini. Okay, so Gemini is great communicators. This is someone that is usually a social butterfly, uh, someone charming, someone playful, someone curious, and someone that wants to learn more, someone that wants to explore more. All right, so let me put this here. Now, if it comes to the physical appearance, I'm looking at the three uh, oracle cards that we pull here, the Leo, Gemini, and Taurus. So if this person is Leo rising, I'm definitely seeing, seeing someone with sharp uh, cat-like eyes or features. Also seeing someone with big hair or very thick or long hair. Definitely the hair is very noticeable and it's a big part of their identity. Leo risings tend to really care about how their hair looks like, about their hairstyle. If it comes to Gemini rising, I think this person would have a well-proportionate nose. This would be someone that likes to switch their looks. Uh, someone that probably has tattoos, piercing, or they change their hairstyle a lot. Um, Gemini Rising also tend to look much younger than they actually are. And then with the Taurus, uh, I would say that this person probably has also sharp features. This is someone that enjoys lazy fashion. So something comfy, but also stylish at the same time. Uh, I'm also getting with the Taurus, someone that has a calm or gentle voice. Uh, also reminds me of the seven of coins that we have here. But I'm also seeing someone that likes to accessorize. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this reading. Let me know in the comments how did you guys like it. And check out this reading to find out how and when will you meet this person. You can also book a personal reading with me if you would like that. The link is in the description box. And I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching once again, and I'll see you later. Bye. Hi, group two. You guys chose the moon card. Let's take a look at the other cards that we have for you. All righty, group two. So these are the tarot cards that we have. Of course, we will check the oracle cards that I have over here later on. Here we will have the rising moon uh, sun sign of your person. And here just a little bit more information about them. So we have two of pentacles, six of wands, page of wands, king of swords and king of cups. Wow. Okay, so... You know, the first card that's sticking out for me is the Six of Wands. With this card, I see that your person is quite popular. So either popular or famous. Uh, for some of you, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be someone famous, like on a, you know, on a bigger level, let's just say. Uh, but for most of you, probably 95% of you, it just means, maybe not 95, maybe 90 <laughs> percent of you it just means that this person is popular like uh in the you know in your environment in your community um in a certain 
I don't know, neighborhood or city or country. It might be on the, on this bigger level as well. It doesn't have to be on a world wide level. But I feel like this person has a lot of attention and gets a lot of attention. And with a six of wands makes me feel like they, uh, for some of you, this person goes like on stage to perform because she's literally on the stage here. Uh, but that's not going to be for everyone. But um, either way, if it's not like, you know, performing on stage and being a star and being famous, uh, a celebrity in that way, it would just mean that this person is uh, popular, as I said, in the community or among among your friends or this person stands out because of who they are, because of what they do. Uh, I see with a two of pentacles that this person is busy. They like to keep themselves busy, but also... Hmm, this kind of duality that I'm getting here with a king of swords and the king of cups. We'll talk about that in a second. We also have the page of wands. So this is someone youthful, someone, um, I mean youthful. This is a youthful energy, but I'm, in general, I'm getting the vibe with a king of swords and king of cups that it's someone older than you, a couple of years older. Okay, but going back to the page of ones with a youthful energy, so someone that is excited about life, someone that is very like physically active as well, someone that uh, enjoys maybe roller skating or um, cycling or uh, I don't know, even running or uh, with a page of ones is the creative fire, creative energy. So this also could be manifesting in... Uh, a person that likes to sing uh, and a person that likes to uh, play uh, an instrument. This might be a painter, this might be a singer, this might be hmm, someone that likes to create something with their hands, someone that likes to be creative and has the need to do so. But going back to what I said with this like duality that I was feeling. So we have the King of Cups and King of Swords. And honestly, these two guys to me usually are quite the opposite of one another. With a King of Swords, I'm seeing someone uh, strategic, someone analytical, someone that is a lot in their head, someone that follows the rules, someone that is very like strict with themselves, likes routine. You know, this also gives me the vibe of someone that is just really magnetic. Like other people are very attracted to this person because this person is like untouchable. That's how it feels. Like you can't reach this person. That's how it feels. So at least it just seems like it. Um, but I'm also getting a message with the King of Cups and King of Swords that to the world, this person is a king of swords, you know? Like, as I said, untouchable. Um, can, people can't fully like either relate to them or they can't fully connect with this person. And then we have the king of cups, which makes me feel like this is the way that this person is going to be for you. And maybe not only you, but this person is not a king of cups to a lot of people. I'm getting a message from the spirit saying that it's probably due to something that has happened in the past and this person is just not opening so easily to others. Um, this person is very careful with who they have around them. I feel like this person doesn't have that many friends. Their friend circle is quite quite small. Even though they might like talk with a lot of people with the six of wands, like being popular, you know, um, being known even famous for some of you, I feel, I, I just feel like this person doesn't trust a lot of people and with the King of Cups, I feel like with you, they're really going to open up. Um, they're going to show you this vulnerable side that they have and they're going to be, be very like gentle with you and loving with you and uh, emotionally mature and emotionally open, you know? But to the world, they are the king of swords. The king of swords might be someone that can seem quite distant or cold even. Someone that is just doing their thing. And with the kings here and the six of wands, I feel like this person is very um, successful at whatever they're doing. Uh, whatever is their life purpose, whatever 
like whichever path they're following they're very um recognizable and successful in it this person's seen as an authority in that field and with a king of swords i feel like usually people don't really know what's up with this person like what's really going on in their head or in their life like once again it's this very like distant energy this unreachable energy so let's see what else we have so with these cards we have okay so we have the fifth house passion yes um that's what we have with the page of wands as well like similar vibes so the fifth house is about passion pleasure joy uh creativity oh my god yes and uh, as you can see this is like um we can see how creative this person can be you know, it's all, it also makes me feel like with the flowers that we have, with the beautiful flowers that are painted here, uh, I just feel like it's connected with the King of Cups and the King of Swords. Like, this person creates something beautiful. This person has a very, like, beautiful soul. But, but they are not really showing this uh, side of themselves to everyone like for example they might paint like this beautiful you know painting with the flowers or with something like really angelic even like angelic that's how it feels but when people ask them about like their opinion on it or to comment on something they give this very like cold distant vibe or answer okay these are such uh random messages but that's how i'm feeling anyway the fifth house is also well passion about our passion um this is also a house of children which makes me feel like this person definitely wants to have kids in the future and for some of you this person might already have a child when you will meet because with the king of cups and king of swords as i said this person is like older older than you Okay, so ooh, we have Chiron, wounded healer. So Chiron is known as a wounded healer and it says heal. So I feel like this is just saying that you guys are going to really help this person heal and open up with a king of cups and king of swords, I think that I was talking about. Okay, and I feel like this person has ability to like heal others as well. Okay. So we also have Mars. Ooh, okay, Mars. So Mars says motion. Mars is a very masculine, masculine uh, sign, not sign, <laughs> planet. Well, this is Aries planet. This is the planet of divine masculine. So I feel like this person, your future spouse is, has a lot of like masculine energy. And this is like why they show off to the world. This is the king of swords energy. The king of cups more feminine energy is hidden inside, you know? It's not something that they show often. They will definitely show it to you, but they, they are seen as someone like secretive, but also someone very masculine, someone, you know, think of an Aries, like a warrior. Someone disciplined, someone like someone in the army. Mars is about strength that we have, about our fighting spirit. It's a very courageous and daring and competitive energy. So uh, let's take a look at their sun, a rising or a moon sign. We have two. So the first one we have Pisces. Oh, <laughs> this is super sweet. Let me just see if I can sit like that. Um, so you guys can still see the card. Pisces always give me the vibe of someone that can uh, camouflage really well. Someone that tends to play different roles in different environments. This is very romantic energy, I gotta say, with Pisces. Someone charitable, someone giving. Uh, someone sensitive, like the King of Cups. King of Cups could be Pisces because he's a water sign. This is someone very compassionate, artistic, imaginative. And we also have Scorpio, so double the water energy. Scorpio is very mysterious and this is a sign that digs very deep. Someone that tends to hide uh, their emotions, their feelings, because they might 
they might be afraid or they are afraid that others will see it as a weakness, which definitely makes sense with what I was saying with the King of Swords and King of Cups. You know, this is who they are to the world. This is who they are to you. They're more open. The Scorpios are definitely very private. So if it comes to the physical appearance of this person, they could be Pisces or Scorpio rising. So let's talk about it. So Scorpio rising, say, you can usually recognize a Scorpio rising by their intimidating gaze. Um, they usually have a very like intimidating, penetrating um, gaze with sharp, alluring eyes. Uh, I realized that Scorpio risings, they might often have um, their eyes kind of like half shut. Uh, I don't know if it's because of the sun and the, the fact that they are quite, um, <laughs> I want to say allergic, but obviously that's not a word. Allergic to sun. Um, no, no, that's not a word. But I really can remember right now and you guys probably know what I mean already. Anyways, let's move on. I feel like with the Scorpio rising, they have definitely a very irresistible vibe. Like you want more, you want to find out who they are what they do, you know, what they are all about, what they're thinking of, but it's hard. It's hard to figure this out with Scorpio risings and Scorpio suns in general as well. They have a very intense eyes and intense look. And then we have Pisces. So Pisces rising, there's once again something about their eyes. They might seem magical, uh, quite big, I would say. And their smile uh, is usually quite soft subtle or half smile. I don't think they tend to smile a lot like with their teeth uh, for pictures, for example. And usually that would represent someone with a very creative, artistic, romantic look. However, looking at the other cards that we have, I'm not really sure about it. I feel like with the King of Swords, they this person would prefer to kind of keep it simple, keep it cool, but simple and plain. That's how it feels. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed this reading. Let me know in the comments how you feel about it. Feel free to check out this reading to find out even more about the physical appearance of your future spouse. And you can book a personal reading with me if you would like that. The link is in the description box. Don't forget to leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Hi, group three. So if you guys chose this card, this is going to be your reading. Let's see what other cards we have for you. Oh my, oh my, group three. So what do we have? So we're starting with the tarot cards. Then we're going to take a look at your oracle cards. Let me see. Are we recording? Okay, we are recording. <laughs> that would be a nightmare if I recorded this or I thought I recorded this. I would do the reading and then it wouldn't be recording. I'm always worried about that. But you know what? We're recording. So, <laughs> okay. So group three, what I'm getting for you, the overall vibe, we have the death. Ooh, we have very like defensive cards, I gotta say. So this person, um, I feel like it's someone, uh, if you guys felt kind of drawn to group two as well, so maybe you can watch it right after this reading because I feel like some of the characteristics are similar. Not all, but some of them are similar. So I'm getting very like, do not approach me vibe. <laughs> uh, to be honest, I'm getting very like mysterious and uh, darker vibe, I would say. So I don't want you guys to think right now that this person is a bad person. No, but I'm just getting like goth vibe kind of maybe not full on goth but kind of goth vibe or kind of like very introverted de very defensive like not trusting others much um and um kind of like other people being a little bit intimate okay not a little bit being intimidated <laughs> by this person but i gotta say with the magician um this is someone that you guys were looking for definitely the magician is talking about a manifestation in its finest form so uh, i feel like this person is going to have everything that you were looking for and probably more. Uh, this is someone that you guys literally manifested. So with a magician, I also see and the other cards that so this person might be quite a lot into like occult. That's why I was saying like kind of darker vibe. That's how it feels like hidden in the shadow, um, mysterious or even like 
uh, crime, crime related vibe. Okay, so I don't want to say this person. <laughs> I'm not trying to say this person is a criminal. No, no, no. It's kind of more like this person might be like investigator or uh, this person might be like in the FBI. I mean, <laughs> um, probably not likely for 99 point 99 percent of you maybe 99 percent uh that this person is like in the fbi but that's kind of the vibes that i'm getting like this person might be a detective you know this person might be into like solving crimes or mysteries or like even watching you know crime movies or being very much into um crime as a genre as a as a book genre uh which makes me also feel like this person might be a writer like, they might be writing, yeah, they might be a writer, uh, this person might be an author, this person might be writing about, like, these, like, darker things in life, you know, even about death, for example, or, like, yeah, that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting about this person, so please don't be scared, They're, this person is not criminal, this is not a bad person, but this person really enjoys, like, this, like, you know, darker, darker things in life, let's, let's just say, okay? So the magician is also representing someone that is a great communicator and someone, as I said, that is kind of like into a cult, into spirituality, into hidden knowledge, hidden depths. I'm getting this vibe with the magician that this person is really great and has a talent in transforming kind of like nothing into something great. They have a power to do it, they have uh, a willpower to do it, but also they have a talent to do it. With the magician, like they have everything you need or like everything they need to become successful at something, to create the success. I really feel like this person could be even, uh, I told you, a writer or uh, working like, um, as a detective or something like that but I also feel like this person might be a psychologist or this person might be like astrologer as well and this is someone that other people are very curious about with the strength card and the nine of wands over here I see this person being courageous I see this person uh, often standing up to an injustice uh, standing up to like bullies you know standing up to um bad people let's just say and with the strength card this person is extremely charismatic uh very confident natural beauty i gotta say someone very adaptable this is both uh, the correct characteristic of the strength and the death card someone that can adapt to new situations to new environments very easily and with the nine of wands, someone defensive, as I was saying before, someone that doesn't back down easily, someone that really fights for what they believe in, uh, for their family, for their friends, someone loyal, someone that, um, once again, is not as afraid of like standing up, you know, to a challenge, to a bully, to, to like uncertainty. With the nine of wands, I'm also seeing someone really funny. Someone determined and competitive. And the death card, um, I feel like we kind of already talked about it, but I don't want you guys to be scared of this card. This is about transformation. It's about change. So I'm just saying that this person is very adaptable and also the fact that they might have had to um, adapt quite a lot into like new environments, new situations in their life. I think it is connected somehow like um with their job with their career but also just in general like what they've been through in life makes me feel like this person might have been moving a lot changing their jobs change their careers changing even for some of you i really feel like this person had to change like their name or they have to change something about themselves to to blend in to adapt to a new situation oh my god this is such an exciting reading i feel like this person is extremely interesting and their life is not ordinary okay so let's see what else we have with the different cards Okay, so ninth house, we have exploration. So the ninth house people, they are um, sometimes like hardcore, hardcore followers of uh, religion or law, um, occult maybe as well. And they're philosophers, inventors. So 
We also have Mercury messages. So I'm saying that definitely it's connected with the magician. The magician is representing great communication skills. And with this, I'm really feeling like this person knows what to say and how to say um, something to make other people kind of like follow them, you know? This person is extremely influential and convincing. So what else we have? We have more cards for you than... <laughs> Then how many cards, um, then the amount of cards that I had for other groups so far. So we also have Saturn structure. Okay, Saturn structure. And we also have the 12th house introspection. The 12th house tells me that this person has great imagination. So that could definitely link up to what I said about this person being a writer, an author, or a lot into a cold. You see, like we see all the chakras that we have. So... Um, I feel like it's something that they're aware of. I feel like like um, I feel like uh, chakras or in healing the chakras is something that they practice. This person might be a healer with a death card that I'm getting here in the magician, the strength card. The twelfth has is also about sacrifice and service. So this person is of service to others, even though that could result in them sacrificing their personal life or sacrificing some some part of themselves basically the 12th house is about higher service and we also have saturn which is a planet of restrictions of structure of boundaries of authority hard work and responsibility so this person is very disciplined in their work in their life I feel like they do help others and this is their life purpose. So let's take a look at the zodiac rising moon sign that we have for you. So we have Capricorn. <laughs> okay, so Capricorn is very hardworking. They need to have a sense of purpose without a clear aim or structure or an achievement goal. Um, they might fall into depression. So purposeful work is a key for the sign. This person takes a lot of responsibility under their shoulders with a Capricorn. They feel responsible for others, for what's happening around them. This person plays by the rules. So once again, makes me feel like this person could be like a detective or a lawyer or even a policeman. For some of you so let's see what else we have so <laughs> we also have aries okay so aries i'm kind of laughing because of how similar these two cards are <laughs> so we have aries aries are extremely brave they're the warrior they like to compete they like to win they're very decisive they make decisions ext extremely quickly and they like to go solo this person likes to work alone they prefer to work alone people with the planets in aries take life by the horns and they enjoy taking risks they enjoy kind of this dangerous situations dangerous energy you know kind of living life on the edge that's how it feels but i feel like that's what makes this person um so exciting and what makes this person stand out so if it comes to the physical appearance if this person would be i mean this person could be but with the Capricorn Risings, um, usually you can see a Capri or you can recognize Capricorn Rising through a very defined bone structure that they have or a very serious face, like a poker face. Uh, Capricorn Risings and Capricorn, Capricorns in general, they age like a fine wine. They have very focused eyes and once again this serious vibe and they have very sharp facial features. They might also have very noticeable teeth, nice and uh, white and nice straight like very noticeable. And then with Aries rising Aries rising tend to have uh, straight brows and pointy chin and very strong gaze, very confident gaze. The impression that you get from both Capricorn and Aries um, rising is uh, quite intimidating, very, very confident. So once again, guys, I feel like if you were drawn to group two, that also could be the reading for you if you feel like watching it because there are a lot of similarities between 
group two and three. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you did, just leave a like under the video that lets me know that you want to see more. Feel free to check out this reading to find out more about your future spouse. And you can book a personal reading with me if you would like that. The link is in the description box. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye. Group four, you guys chose the 10 of cups. So this is your reading. Let's see what other cards we have for you. Oh my God, group four. This is such a different vibe than group three. Not saying that one was, or it's better than the other. It's just so different. <laughs> okay, so these are your tarot cards and we will check the rising sun. Uh, moon sign of your person and some other cards and at the very end we can figure out their physical appearance as well so let me just sip on some tea all right let's get started so your person this person is so cute <laughs> this person is just so loving and i'm, I'm getting a lot of uh, water vibes what a sign vibes like very artistic energy very emotional emotionally mature and supportive and compassionate mm. <laughs> super loving i love it um so let's maybe get started with the four of wands so this card is about environment and your community uh, people around us friends friend circles at least to me uh this also is usually a card of celebration uh and the wedding and events like that so uh, with this card, I'm saying that this person is very um, extroverted. Yes, like this person likes to be around people, likes to be helpful, likes to be of service, um, assisting others, supporting others, helping others, being around others, spending time together, uh, going out, you know, being in the community. Like they're very invested in their community with the four of uh, wants and I also am feeling like this person is going to be from your community so whatever kind of community you have going going on there um, maybe you're like in a spiritual community or you know the vibe of the friends that you have around you or a kind of like maybe a forum that you are interested in I mean a hobby that you're interested in and you are like you know reading a forum uh, or like you're you're on the forum of that specific like topic or whatever it is you for example you might be a lot into gaming or anime like this person is too you know i feel like this person has quite similar interest uh as uh, as you do or to you so that's what we see first of all with the high priestess i'm seeing someone um very intuitive someone that has healing abilities someone that often keeps a lot to themselves especially if they go through some difficult periods difficult time um, this person is not going to be straight away like looking for someone to make them feel good like looking for shoulder to cry on i feel like this person often goes through their their shadow time their dark time uh, on their own uh, keeping it within themselves, like not wanting to bother anyone, not wanting to, you know, it's not like they're not trusting. I just feel like they don't want to bother other people with their, with their life, with their stuff, with their BS. That's how it feels. I'm not saying that this is correct or it's incorrect. It's just how this person deals with um, the things around them with the problems uh, around them, with their problems, with their struggles, they they really keep it like inward, you know? So what else we have? We have the fall. <laughs> the fall. So the fall is very spontaneous energy. It's someone that is always ready for new adventures. I also see this as someone new for you. So I don't think it's anyone that you know. It's definitely not your ex or anyone that you've been like previously you know uh interested in uh it might be someone that is already in your life right now but it's like a new person it's a new energy uh so yeah going back to the fool so the fool is spontaneous the fool is uh does not care about what other people say about them the fool is just doing their thing um, the fool is very trusting in the universe 
uh, I feel like this person might be very spiritual or religious, uh, definitely has a very strong beliefs, uh, strong belief system. They trust themselves, they trust that the universe will catch them. Uh, the tr they trust like in new journeys, in new ventures, and they're open to it, very open to it. This might be also someone that falls in love often and quickly. <laughs> I'm um, not saying that it has to be like in relationships and not saying that if they're going to be in love with you, you guys are going to break, break up after a couple of months because they fall in love with somebody else. Um, that's not it. No, I just feel like they fall in love with like other things, you know, like they might have a lot of hobbies, a lot of interests, uh, even like quite a lot of animals I gotta say for some of you they have definitely definitely they have an animal like a dog or a cat that they love super deeply but this person is very compassionate this person wants to um help others and everyone as much as they can but once again they they love to fall in love they love the idea of love they love the idea of romance this person is very romantic with the with the two of cups that we have over here. This is a soulmate connection. This person believes in soulmates. This person believes in uh, love from the first sight. And yeah, this person is extremely romantic. They probably work, uh, not work, uh, watch a lot of like romantic movies. And uh, I feel like, yeah, it's, this person is very emotional. And me being a Capricorn moon, I feel like it's uh, hard for me to even explain that being Capricorn moon because I'm not that romantic, I'm not that emotional, but this person is, and yeah, <laughs> I really feel like this person might be your soulmate, um, this person is very artistic, with the world, I feel like this person comes from like a different part of the world, um, this person might be traveling a lot, or have traveled a lot around the world, they have seen places, you know, I don't think that they move often because I feel the sense with the four of wands that they like to be um, very involved with their community and with their like environment, with the people around them. But with the world, I just feel like they have traveled a lot or they have seen a lot. And with the world uh, and the fall, I feel like this person is quite young and um, they have an old soul. It really feels this way with high priestess and the world. Um, this person has reincarnated many, 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 many times on this earth. They know a lot. Uh, they have this ancient wisdom. That's how it feels. Uh, I also feel like uh, the high priestess. This could have been, uh, could be, representing a female figure in their life that is really important to them or was very important. It could be like a mother or it could be a grandma. That's how it feels. Um, or the fact that they are very connected with like um, their their ancestors. Like I really feel like this person is a lot into spirituality, meditation, and self development, but on a very like love frequency. That's how it feels. Anyway, this person is young, but I feel like they have been through a lot already. They are very experienced, and they have, as I said, this like higher or ancient knowledge. Oh, I love that. And also you guys chose the Ten of Cups, which is a kind of family. So you guys are going um, definitely to build a family together. And I feel like you're going to be inseparable. Okay, let's see what else we have with the other cards. All right, so we have Sixth House and we also have the Seventh House, of course. So the Seventh House about relationships, about connections that we have with others. The Seventh House is a house of marriage as well. So I, as I said, this person uh, loves love and loves romance. And I feel like this person was looking for a future spouse as well. Like they were looking for a soulmate connection. This is like a priority for them to have that person in their life, to make them feel good, to um, go through life together. And in general, their relationships. So community, as I said, very important, other people. And relationships, connections with others are very important to this person. The sixth house is usually about um, work, day-to-day day -day work, routines, and service 
to others. Um, being of service, I feel like I already mentioned that quite a lot already, so I'm just going to move on from it. But uh, this is also a house of um, your well-being, your health, your physical and mental health. So I feel like this person pays big attention to their mental health, to their physical health. They take care of their body really well. Like they eat very clean, you know, they make sure that they move enough. Um, and they they really care about mental health, health of uh, themselves, but also of others. I feel like they might be talking quite a lot about mental health, about how to maybe improve it or how important it is. Like they're advocates for it. I feel like this person leads a very healthy lifestyle or at least this is something that they are um, going for, you know, this is their this is their mantra this is their goal okay so let's see what else we have so we have the three zodiac rising moon signs because <laughs> uh, it's going to be different for everyone here so we have sagittarius expand okay so sagittarius people are very optimistic they uplift others they're adventurous uh, they're free-spirited they usually don't care about what people say about them so that's very the fool uh, like energy this is also representing philosophers and people that go deep you know people that search for meaning people that also with the world and the Sagittarius this person might speak a couple of different languages or like at least two different languages that's how it feels and expand so they have this need to expand their horizons to broaden their horizons by either learning new language or discovering learning about different cultures or traveling yeah all right so we also have a libra which makes sense because libras they are about uh libra is actually the seventh zodiac sign and we have the seventh house libra's house is the seventh house originally um and Libra is all about building relations with others, uh, teamwork, um, justice as well, and improving like the communication skills. But it's all that uh, everything is connected here with the relationship with the seventh house. So I'm not gonna repeat myself, but that's what we have. We also have Libra, and we also have a Virgo. Ooh, and this is so interesting because Virgo is the sixth house originally. So what I was saying about like wanting to um, improve the physical and mental health, that's literally what the Virgo is also about. Virgo is about also being of service to others, helping others, supporting others, like being assisting others basically they feel mm, i feel i think virgos feel at their best when they know that they could help someone or that their knowledge their experience was useful like they like to feel useful and once again this big focus on like wanting to improve their health mental health physical health wanting to teach other people about it so if it comes to physical appearance if your person will be a virgo rising which is possible because we have virgo libra sagittarius virgo risings they have quite tiny features i would say uh, tiny like facial features so maybe smaller eyes or smaller lips they have a very smart look about them though and they appear to always be analyzing something Virgo rising also tend to have quite an innocent look about them and they're not that innocent you know but they have this innocent look with Sagittarius that could be representing big uh, or wide thighs or butt or hips because that's what Sagittarius rules. Sagittarius people smile with their eyes. They're very happy, positive, optimistic, cheerful, and they smile a lot in general. I feel like this person smiles a lot. They have a colorful style and very like wild freestyle. Sagittarius face might be long and oval. And I feel like Sagittarius rising people are Sagittarius sun. They like to accessorize with like big glasses or always wearing a beanie or something that something that is noticeable, something that defines them. And Libra rising, wow, Libra risings they usually are very very beautiful very handsome people they have symmetrical facial features usually they have very soft smooth 
uh, skin. Their hair is usually very healthy and glowy and just looking really, really good. And for some of you, I feel like this person, if they're going to be Libra rising, um, they might have a noticeable beauty mark on their face. Okay, group four, I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, just leave a like under the video. Let me know in the comments, how did you guys like it? Feel free to check out this reading, the ultimate future spouse reading, if you haven't seen it yet, or just see this playlist to learn more about your future spouse. You can also book a personal reading with me if you would like that. The link is in the description box. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.